It's a cloud car. All right. Um, because of COVID, uh, we've asked people to wear masks while you're inside. I'm going to put mine down so that the audio comes through. Um, so, you know, don't stand too close to me. Tell me when you're ready. You are ready. Good afternoon and welcome to Friends of Wheeling meeting. Today is October the 24th, 2021, and we are here at the Bridge Tavern and doing an after tour. I looked up our records and we did a before tour in June of, late June of 2018. Wow. Uh, Joanne Sullivan took a lot of pictures that day and so when I send out the next newsletter, we'll make sure that we include the old pictures in addition to the new pictures. My name is Jean Finstein, and I'm currently the president of Friends of Wheeling. We have other board members with us. Uh, if you could give a wave, we won't bother to really introduce people, but, um, but welcome to everyone. We'll start with a little history of the building, and then the current owners and Wendy will take us through a slideshow, as I said, to show some of the things that you wouldn't be able to see on the tour. I will also mention that there is a menu from um, some That's point the menu. in the past. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that, yeah, hamburgs are 10 cents. So, uh, but, but don't, you know. Hold on there, hold on. We're not too far from that. I'll get excited. I'll take it though. All right, so here we go. Um, this building was not the original bridge bar. But this building was built probably in the late 1800s. It housed a grocery store with housing on the second floor. The 1884 and 1890 Sanborn insurance maps show the brick three-story corner building listed at 948 as a grocery and the adjacent building listed at 946 Main as a boarding establishment. An apparent addition was located to the rear or the east, which would be in that way. Um, to the north stood another three-story building that's now the site of the Eagles building, and this was clear back in 1884. Uh, in 1885, the, pro the property was purchased by Ellen Dittman for $11,000, which is the equivalent of more than $3,000 today, suggesting that the building was a substantial one at that time. By the time of the 1901-02 city directory, Charles W. Smith ran a grocery store in the corner building and lineman George J. Niddle is listed as living on the second floor. Wealthy industrialist James N. Vance, who was the one who donated the funds for Vance Memorial Church, lived sort of diagonally across the street and a bit to the north, probably where the parking lot for the Knights Inn is now. The 1902 Sanborn map shows the same footprint as in 84 and 90. Lily E. Vance, who was the wife of James N. Vance, is listed as the owner of the property as of 1904, and Charles W. Smith continued operating a grocery store there with Mrs. Bessie Furman, the widow of George Furman, the second floor tenant in the 1907-09 city directory. E.B. Potts purchased the property in 1912, and there was a rider on the deed that stated that, quote, it shall not be used as a theater or hotel as long as 933 Main Street shall be owned and occupied by James N. Vance. So they wanted to, to protect the neighborhood. <laughs> Following the death of Vance in 1913, the next available city directory, that's 1917-18, still shows a grocery on the corner with E.B. Potts as the proprietor, and the hotel wheeling above and behind the grocery with the address of 13 10th Street. A 1915 photo shows a four-story building at that time, so that's when the fourth floor was added. Uh, and the signage still shows Hotel Wheeling and E.B. Potts. Now at that time, the Bridge Bar was across the street where the Knights Inn is now and that's where this menu comes from and I'll put it over here on the table and you can see that the bridge bar used to be beside the suspension bridge rather than across from the suspension bridge. So if you want that 10 cent hamburger, you'll have to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> At least, yeah. Um, 
1922 Sanborn map has the four-story building. The hotel lobby was located along 10th Street about midway between Main Street and the alley, and the dining room was just to the east, probably here, and an auto showroom was on the alley corner. Don't think there are any cars in there. Well, there are cars there now, but not, yeah. Uh, Fanny Good, the wife of L.S. Good, is listed as the owner of the property as of 1926. Following her death in 1944, it was left to her sons, Samuel and Sidney Good, whose names we know from the Good department store. The 1937 Board of Trade brochure includes a photo of the building at that time, and the 1938 city directory lists the Hotel Wheeling, managed by E. Ammon, as, quote, European, modern, on the National Highway, at the suspension bridge, rooms a dollar and a quarter and up, Co coffee shop in connection, and garage service. Now, a dollar and a quarter in 1938, if we use an inflation calculator, is only about $22 today, so it was not a very expensive hotel. Directors showed that the site was also home to the terminal confectionery and the waiting room. Now, when we've done some other research on Big Bill Lias, we found a list of the locations of some of his slot machines, and some of them were located in the waiting room. Have you found any slot machines? Not yet, <laughs> not yet. So the trolley, the trolley used to come by here, and people could wait in the waiting room, and of course, you know, avail themselves of the machines. In the early 1960s, Pete Dormus opened the Bridge Tavern below the Hotel Wheeling, where the waiting room had been located. Dormus had previously worked at the Bridge Hotel, which had stood across Main Street. The last directory listing for the hotel was 1975. So my guess is that's the last time anybody lived upstairs yep. be before now. Yep. Okay. Uh, Pete Dormus' son George was interviewed for a Wheelunk article in 2015. He stated, quote, it was a heck of an experience for someone my age at that time. People coming in and out, the elevator going up and down, new face after new face appearing. And that's not to mention all the people who came here from the Capitol when the Jamboree was still going strong. That's when it was still known as the 10th Street Waiting Room. Anthony and Elaine Vassalou purchased the property in 1983 and sold it in the next year to the Hall Corporation. And in 1989, George, Nor Dormus's, George Dormus, the son of Pete, purchased the property and owned it until 2018 when the current owners purchased it. And the current owners are Doug and Mike Carl. And I will turn this over to them at this point, and uh, I will give you the microphone. This, this is what, what the tag team is. Yeah. Right. So uh, this is the condition of the building. We bought it in 2016. 2016, we actually bought the building. Um, yeah, in 16, we got purchased the building, and we were just landlords. George ran it for another three years. Um, okay. Just, we just paid us rent. Um, and it, it, when he uh, hit 71, I think Linda said, that's enough. You need to retire. <laughs> and that's when we decided to take over the, uh, actually, operation of the bridge. So this project is really not the Bridge Tavern project. It's the Wheeling Hotel project. Correct. Yeah. 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 Bridge Tavern is just a business. So we started with windows, and this was the condition of an interior view of the windows when we uh, took over the project. So you can, uh, yeah. It was an awesome going, what did you boys do? And I think that's what our parents were saying for a while. What did you get your spouses involved with? And this was a prototype of the new window. That's how we clean them now. <laughs> <laughs> Sam blasted the building. Had it painted from top to bottom. So if you go back to the windows, Doug, and, and Wendy can appreciate this, we went to um, uh, American Plate Glass and tried to get window, windows in a bulk, right? You just replacement windows. Maintaining historical um, integrity, um, we had the folks from Charleston come up and look at the windows, and the, the problem we had was, was all the windows were a little bit different. None were, none were, you couldn't buy, we actually re rebuilt and replaced 95 windows in this building. And you couldn't buy 95 windows of the same type. There was 
One was an inch off, one was two inches off the windows. And you could see that the, uh, the brick was gone because water had damaged the brick. Some of the sills had fallen. Um, so, you know, try, trying to fix a regular multi-purchase window in there, to pan it on the outside, all the panning would have looked different. That's what the historical society had a problem with. We don't mind you putting the windows in, but this one would have had three inch panning, this one would have had one inch panning because all the windows were a little bit different and economically we just couldn't do it. So that's when we hired Sarl Venter, who is now a Roxby development guy, um, to rebuild every window to the opening. So every window is unique in itself. I mean, a lot of them are fairly similar, but they're all different because what we didn't want, yeah, and they all look like this, and they all, they all have window weights, they all have the window ropes back in them. They're 1910 specification rebuilt windows, but we weren't able to purchase in bulk 100 windows that would fit all the openings because the openings were all different. I and mean, the thing was just a tragedy. We didn't want to do it. Trust me, we didn't want to do it, but I mean, we kind of stuck with it. And the other thing, too, about the window openings, um, so if you think about dimensions of the X and Y plane, you know, that's horizontal and vertical, but in the world of architecture, it, you know, in buildings, there's the Z plane as well. So there's, there's, you know, horizontal, vertical, but then there's also plum, right? You're either out of plum or you're in plum. So on all 95 windows, we have crooked <laughs> everything. Yep. So again, trying to order a brand new manufactured window that's going to be perfect because that's how new windows are manufactured they're going to be plumb they're going to be you know x y and z everything is going to be absolutely perfect and so we were looking at the prospect of taking an absolutely perfect window and trying to shove it square peg round hole into each one of these different openings so at that point that's where literally every single window is a custom opening to opening to opening yeah, to opening previous to this one, Doug, um, shows you the um, challenge that they had replacing those windows. Um, you know, the, the brick was gone, the sills were gone, the mortar was ate out. Um, it was just, it was absolutely a nightmare. Uh-oh, he's struggling. He'll figure it out. Videographer. There you go. And while you're doing that, just to, for a second, when you're, when you're leaving today, go across the street and turn and look back towards the building, and you'll be able to see and read the building for those additions. You'll be, if you look, you can see the western section of the building, that's the original section that was built first, that's building. three stories. And if you pay attention, you can see that the window heights are actually, for that section of the building, they're different than the rest of the building. You can, you can see and you the can see the, the top, built, that's right. right. The brick is different here, the sills are different. There's no top sill on this, but there's top sills on this. The fourth floor is completely different and the brick is completely different. This section of the building right here from what, one, two, three, four, five windows yes. through seven windows is a painted brick. That brick is architectural brick that is not painted. So they were all, you can see the phases of the building when it was built. And that uh, cream marker at the at the top of the third floor so when the fourth floor was added it was added for the entire length of the building and so that's why the fourth floor is uniform for the the, the entire length we found roofing paper on two where they put the third floor on and we found roofing paper on three where the fourth floor was put on <laughs> And the structure of the original third floor section, we call that the west side, um, it actually is a post and beam construction. So think of a big old barn from 1900 or late teen, not eight, 1890s. Um, they're, they're covered now, but they were mortise and tendon, oversized, heavy timber pieces that notched into each other, and then with a wooden pin, doweled and pinned and held together and that's the beam, how the beams were almost 30 foot long solid beam <laughs> literally mortised together yeah but the carpenters when they looked at this thing said i've never seen anything like it they literally drilled holes and yeah. pinned okay. wood into wood in a mortised fashion almost like a log cabin i've never seen anything like it yeah it was incredible they must have got the trees from up on the hill that's as near as we can figure yeah. because they were that large and to move you know 
oversized heavy timbers, you know, any length of... of hey, that's Larry you know. the Painter. That's right. So we took uh, yeah. detailed time to uh, do the, uh, what's that called there, Mike? The Cornice. There you go. So please take advantage and look up when you walk outside. Yeah, Larry spent a lot of time on it. We went from old fuse box to new box. <laughs> that is our air conditioning farm that's on the roof. <laughs> There are 18 condensing units up there. Because wow. each apartment has its own air conditioning unit. This particular unit is separate. You know, the, uh, um, there's, a, there's a unit for the event center. There's a unit for the bathroom and the lobby. There's, a unit, there's two units for the um, uh, bridge tavern itself. And then every apartment has its own individual unit. Elevator pit. That was a fun project. <laughs> we had to build, what, three new walls to the... Yeah, so when we looked at the elevator, when we first bought the place, um, uh, uh, Dustin from West Virginia Elevator comes in, looks at the elevator, we run the car up. A um, couple things. One, he runs the car up and looks at the racks or the uh, rails that are on the back mounted. He said, those rails are in good shape. He said, we can reuse those rails. Huh? And this is going to be fine. So he quotes us a price to replace the elevator using the existing rails, which he was correct. They were fine. Um, when we gutted the elevator shaft, we found out that the elevator shaft was in fact framed with two befores. Um, he tells me, he said, Mike, when I put my equipment on top of this roof, coming off the basement floor, there's about 20,000 pounds of thrust. Does it weigh 20,000 pounds, but the torque on this, he said, there's no way you can do that. So we looked at structural steel, we looked at columns, we looked at welding. And we finally just ripped it all out and went straight to the basement. We poured a foundation and we laid block from the, from the basement all the way to the fourth floor so we could mount the rails back on. We did save the rails. Dust was correct. The rails were good. The elevator shaft was crap. Yeah, it was, that, that was a nightmare. That was an unforeseen expense of many. Yeah. Looking down. And just so you know, how many folks were in here when uh, George had the lower end dining? Right? Remember, remember that? And there was like a little bar that was right there. That was actually the elevator car. I mean, what he, what the, what he did, it's crazy. What he did is he lowered it to the first floor, turned it off, gutted the elevator and made it a bar and it just hung there so when Dustin came in it hung there for 30 years and when Dustin came in he went up to the top so if the car is here the weights are here right because there were elevator weights the weights had hung there for 30 years Dustin came in and said holy shit one of, these cables, one of these cables would have snapped. That car would have went straight to the roof because the weights are coming down. It was incredible. Literally, the weights were hanging on the third floor because the car was on the first floor. Hung there for 30 years. Incredible. So this corner of the photo is the one to pay attention to because that starts the story that we had to recreate a support structure for the entire building. Am I correct? That's that? correct. Yep. So that's just the process of how we start from the basement and it went all So the that's way. in the basement. And what happened was when we got to the fourth floor and started gutting the fourth floor, and of course you're, you want to make these apartments, right? So you want to take this wall out, you want to take that wall out. We found out that the fourth floor load bearing for the roof did not match the third floor load bearing for the rest of the building. So you can't take that wall out or this is all falling down. So we had to go clear to the basement, pour foundations, and run columns from the basement clear through to the fourth floor so that the building maintained its own weight structure all the way up. Because when they put the fourth floor on, they didn't give a crap what the third floor said. They just threw it up there. Uh, that's all well and good because, again, a lot of that stuff was mortised together and a lot of it was just old school carpentry, but you can't start tearing walls out because then things are falling down. Um, and what we ended up doing, those columns right there that are in the basement, we ended up taking those columns through one, two, three, and four, and through the roof. Yep. So we took the columns all the way through the roof. Um, we now have six foot, well we did have six foot tall columns going through the roof. We cut those off to two foot above the roof and we'll be able to put, hopefully in the spring, we can do a 16 by 20 privacy deck up there. 
because the, and it goes clear to the basement. You know, the columns go all the way down. It's the only thing that's going to make the structural expense worth it is the is the payoff. Is the payoff. And and just to say, when you're up. So what a three hundred thousand dollar deck. Yeah. When when you're when you're in the west side of the building, uh, you'll see on the second floor that there's a wall that kind of overlaps one of the windows. And then when you're on the third floor, you'll see some columns that are kind of in the middle of space and it overlaps one of the windows. And then when you're on the fourth floor, same condition. And so it, to your eye, it looks a little hinky, you know, and it's, you know, but those are in the places where, where we had to put them so they would all align all the way vertically through the building. So we had to sacrifice yep. a little bit of a weird condition um, it, to, to have done anything other than that was, was actually going to be worse. So that was one of our trade-offs. So and when, let, let me interrupt just for a minute. Um, I neglected to introduce Wendy. You want to take your mask off so oh, people can see you? Sure. Wendy Scatterday was the architect on this project. And so right, yeah, <laughs> sure. the, well the, this was not a normal project, no. <laughs> as, as you can tell. So Wendy, yeah, good job. And this is why she knows all these details. Yeah. So the midsection going this way is the waiting room parlor, named after the waiting room, which the building used to be. And that's where the gaming room is. And it used to be a beauty shop among other businesses. And so behind the beauty shop was this corridor, which is what we found, which now has become um, the corridor that you see out in front of you. And it's that corridor. So that was that transformation. And bathrooms, y'all remember the bathrooms in the Bridge Tavern? That's the men's room, that's the men's room. <laughs> and the women's room. And the women's room. Yeah. So. And the pressed tin ceiling? The oh, sorry. sorry. Yep. The, the pressed tin ceiling that you see is original, yep. and we, we were able to salvage it. Yep, there's slides of that coming up. <laughs> sorry. So that's all right, so new doors. If you can go back, because the uh, lobby only had one door. Oh, there it is. There's the, uh, there's the, that's the elevator. I'm going back. All right. Oops. Yep. There you go. That. That's the lobby. So that one window is now that door. And again, that was all code compliant egress. Because we have so many people in the building, you have to have so much available egress to get out of the building. So we couldn't leave so just those tour. Uh, just those two doors, we took the window out and had to add another door in. So, you tell me when you want to stop. That's the stop. Uh, elevator. I'm done. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now that's the elevator. <laughs> Lower room in the lobby. Lower end dining. There's your tin seal. And we were able to salvage enough ceiling tile out of here to repair the hallway and the lobby, but we didn't have enough to save this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was tin ceilings above everything, but there were so many partition walls and holes in it where they dropped ceilings and they just, they just brutalized the ceiling. But we were able to save enough panels out of here that we could replace them in the corridor and the lobby, so at least save the lobby and the corridor. And then we had to add this new ceiling in, just didn't have enough left. So we had to add fire rated doors, fire protection, la la la. Ingenious, I'll give my brother snaps on this one, um, to recreate the framing of the metal doors to give it the old hotel lobby look. So as you're walking around, we painstakingly redid from the chair rail to the baseboards to the uh, border around the door. Instead of the two inch wide right. uh, metal frame that's typical on a metal frame door, we had the carpenters route out uh, wood to fit over top of the metal so it looked like it was actually a wood frame door when it was done. That is the second floor hallway of the hotel when we, when we bought the place. So that was done by the Holly Corporation. Quite a state, quite a state. So when you go up there now, you'll be enjoying this view. Uh, that again is the second floor of the space. Thank you very much. And that's where we're at today.
They started a remodel to do something in the 80s and just never completed it. They just they abandoned yeah. it. Second floor of the space. This is also the second floor. I think one of the challenges we wanted is to keep the archway. We had to keep the archway, but we had to put a ramp in for ADA accessibility. Right. So we kept the archway. It's still there. Yeah, because it looks like this now. And now it looks like that. So you have two steps and a ramp. That stairwell was a mess. Good All the great. stairwell, the entire stairwell looked like this. And I think for a couple of years, George ran a uh, Halloween haunted house. <laughs> up and, down. and it was a perfect setting for it, right? Because it scared me. <laughs> but uh, what a great team we have because now they look like this. So, all right, we'll stop here because this is. I think that's my story. apartment. It is. It is. Yep. Stop. That's my apartment. So, that's third floor. This is how we shifted the joists. Yeah, so uh, when we found out that the fourth floor did not match the third floor, we tore out all of the floor joists, ran the columns up, and had to rebuild the fourth floor floor on here. So you're actually, this picture is taken from the third floor, looking up to the fourth floor. Yeah. All the joists were gone. Is the top of that door really as crooked? That's my, I think he was leaning a little bit when we took the picture. So. <laughs> That's, that's my corridor. This corridor right here is my apartment corridor looking out towards, and that's my brother's corridor looking out towards where the elevator is in the hallway. And you guys will see that when you get upstairs. And if you look... But the picture was taken from the third floor. If you look really closely, you'll see through the center of that beam, there's a crack, that line, and those holes. That, again, is the mortise and tension, tendon that each one of the joists were notched into the main beam, but because that was done, it basically denigrated the structural integrity of the main beam, and so that's what... Up on four, looking down on three. That would be a loft apartment that we do not have. Yeah, and the, new, and the, uh, the, the clean columns that you see are all the new columns that were coming up from the basement. <coughs> A ton, a ton, and, and what was really damaging, can you stop that? What was really damaging was um, not so much the wood, because a lot of this got replaced anyway, uh, but a, a, the, uh, the most problematic would have been the brick, um, because when water gets behind the window, it eats out all the mortar and the brick, and it was just, that was a, that was a lot. I mean, it, the, the brick damage was awful. You know, the, um, and what we did originally, as soon as we bought the building, the first thing we did was replace the roof and start boarding up the windows because you got to you got to seal up the envelope because water will just eat your building. It just and it, when we got up when we first bought the building, we went up on the fourth floor. And I don't know if you guys ever remember that um, game that was called Mousetrap, <laughs> right? We saw that on the fourth floor. There was there was a pipe with a plastic sheet going to a barrel that had a hole drilled in it with a pipe going out of it. And, and he would literally, I mean, the roof was leaking forever and it would just go into a barrel, roll out of here, and every time it rained, water would flood the basement. No, it was just awful, yeah. awful. So we're on the third floor in Mike and Alicia's unit. Yep, that's my apartment, looks lovely. That is the main entrance <laughs> coming, you're looking towards the main entrance, so their unit is going that way. And that was a condition of once upon a time. But now, they live like this. Yeah. That's the, your living room? That's my living yep. room. Yep. I believe it is. Yep. That's still your living room with a nice little assembly yep. pal there. And there we go. That's also going into your kitchen. Yes. Or it used to be. Now it's going into your kitchen. Yes. Did you construct the fireplace we just saw? That, that that's place? actually my kitchen right there. That that was the only fireplace in the in the in, the, in that section of my apartment. That was a real fireplace. Uh, I believe it was gas. I don't think it was ever wood. I don't, I don't think it was wood burning. I don't think. I think they had those little gas yes, little, fired gas heater. Gas. Those little heater. So yeah. that that's my kitchen. That's the kitchen. And that's, that's my kitchen that's now. Kitchen. Uh, but to answer your question, there were a few mantles that were in the building that were salvaged and they've been reinstalled. 
Yeah, we saved them all and we reinstalled them someplace just to put them up. Nice. Floor story? Yeah, so this that particular section right there of the floor was gone when we got the when we uh, bought the building. So we went to the new lumber, had um, a floor made to try and match the existing floor that was there, uh, and then refinished it all at the same time. It's pretty close. You can't really tell. It's pretty close, but you can see the plywood. And when you get upstairs, you'll see this. This was a great Wendy idea, right? So we so you see the plywood right there, and that's where walls were. That was that section of the new floor that you see right there was actually a sleeping room. That was one of the rooms, and that's what you got. You got a twin bed, you got a dresser, and you got a sink. And if you had to use the shower or the shitter, you had to go down the hall. So um, we th that plywood right there shows where a wall was and where there's no plywood was the door between the two sleeping rooms. You could rent two rooms, open up the door, you have two rooms. We decided to leave the plywood so that it would be a conversation piece to see exactly how big these rooms were when you had a sleeping room. Um, so uh, all, that floor was gone when we got there so we had to buy a new floor. All the other floor, the darker floor you see is all original and that's what it looks like now. Stairwells again, my favorite thing. Scary. That's the fourth floor looking down onto the third floor. It is Halloween. It is indeed. And there we are now. Daily flooring. If you guys have hardwood floors, Jim Daly is the bomb. He's just amazing. He did the flat iron building, all the flooring down there. Come in, sanded, refinished, stained. And he's coming back next week to put some poly down on some stuff now that I've got my contractors the hell out of here. So this is the fourth floor, and this lovely ditty was the stairs. Like in the old houses, you'd pull the stairs down from the attic, and you'd go up, and that's how you used to get to the roof. So it was very scary, because there was like a two-foot gap from the top of the ladder to the roof, and it was like, eh, if you had a height issue. So this is the fourth floor. On this side is now a two-bedroom, two-bath. On this side is now a one-bedroom, one-bath Airbnb. But all that to say, we'll show Nick's... Uh, Da, da, da. And there we are today. So yeah, so we have a residence here, Nick and McKenna on that side, and then we have an Airbnb on that side. Were the transoms there? Or did you yes. Were they there? Yep. Oh yeah, everything was there. Only on the fourth floor though, uh, across the the hallway, but the east side on two and three, they were there. But because that was an addition. The original second and third floor do not have the transoms. They never, they weren't there, and they never were. You know, and we didn't put any in or anything. So, but where you see a transom when you're up through the tour, those are original. So this is just an example of one of the hotel rooms when we inherited the place, i.e., bought the place, um, and we are transforming those into Airbnbs. So now they're going to be looking a little bit more like this. So same corner view and the Airbnb. And are those available for rent now? They are. They okay. Sure are. Short -term, Airbnb? Short-term rental. And how does someone um, rent that? Right now you can call us and soon we'll be on VRBO. I think it's okay. Verbo. Yeah, Verbo. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and, and is it... $25 a night? No, no, no. <laughs> a, a, a dollar and a quarter. And that 10-cent burger you got coming. <laughs> That's right. So this is looking into summer and hours unit. Um, going in from the front door. Um, this was again a hotel room initially, and this is 10th Street and this is Main Street. And that was the condition of that corner when we bought it. And here we are today. So you can do that. And then I think the next one is kitchen. This, yeah, right? <laughs> kitchen, sadly we had to lose these two windows, but it is what it is. Main Street is on this side, uh, and you're looking inwards, and then our kitchen now kind of looks like uh, that. So, so the two windows would have been right there. But along the way, we found some really quirky newspaper artifacts down in the basement attached to the walls, things like that. 1926 Wheeling Intelligencer, uh, newspaper clippings, Kepner's had a really cool ad. And then there was this ditty, and if anybody's on Facebook, uh, you would have seen this by now. Uh, no, nope. let's stop that and go back. So, which one was this, Mike? That was the, the uh, uh, water line coming in. We had a three-quarter inch water line coming into the building when we bought the building. 
because the only thing that was running was the tavern, which was fine for the tavern, but um, in order to occupy the building, we needed at least a two inch, three inch water service to come into the building to feed all the floors, because we had now we have living up here. Um, with the uh, infrastructure project that's going on, we discovered that we weren't gonna get our new main water until December. I said, no, we can't have that, good heavens. Um, you know, I wanna move down here. Um, and Nick and McKenna were moving in and we're trying to rent the space. Um, so the city of, city of Wheeling Water Department, and they've been great, city's been really good. Honestly, God, we really had no problem, the city has been great for us. Um, so the city of Wheeling Water Department comes down and finds that there is not on the map, but they believe there's a three inch tap out there that got reduced to three quarter back in the 80s when there was a leak or something because the building was shut down. They didn't need anything more than a three quarter inch water main. Sure enough, we went down, we dug it up, we found an old three inch valve down there. I was terrified to operate that valve because if I turn that valve off, it may never come back on. Now I have no service. <laughs> so sure enough, City of Wheeling comes down. They send a crew down here. We send some folks down from H.E. Newman Company. A couple of my plumbers come down and they exercise the valve probably two, three hours. They put WD-40 on it. I mean, we just, because that valve has <laughs> been in the dirt forever and it shuts off. Amazingly, it shuts off and we end up with a two inch service now coming into our building that's uh, domestic service certainly doesn't provide all the fire uh, suppression. You can see there's fire sprinklers everywhere. The building is completely sprinkled. All the piping is done. We just don't have water because we're still working on the main outside. But we should have that in about two weeks coming, wow. coming quickly. So when we opened up the sidewalk, we found this um, concave vault of brick. And if you get down into the basement, you can see where that, um, the basement is mostly sandstone and plaster but there is a section right there that is concrete block. So that was a vault or a tunnel of some sort, we don't have no idea what it was, that came from the basement of the Bridge Tavern, that's underneath the Bridge Tavern, across the street, the main street, where the old Wheeling Hotel was. And we have no idea what that was, but it was actually an architectural structure that was underneath the street. We, we have, have no idea what it was. We have many historians, quote unquote, uh, online historians, co come in and, and share their points of view. One had said that it was part of the Underground Railroad that was built underneath Wheeling that connected to the banks of the Ohio River to get folks out of the state when it was still Virginia and onto the river and up north. And then others were saying that it was back before there was refrigerations, it was cold storage. So they kept all your meats and your colds and everything underground. And then the most notorious was the Prohibition area where everybody ran booze underneath Wheeling uh, to get to different establishments. But nonetheless, it was kind of fun finding the architecture that supports all of these stories uh, about Wheeling in its day. Yeah, so. that's not random brick. That was actually an architectural yeah. um, oh, it's an arch. arch structure and, that and was built for something. And this way and then went straight down. So you so just it take it arched, down. arched, and then down. Yeah. So. Uh, Jimmy Hoffa was not there. No. <laughs> so most people are familiar with that entrance to the bridge. And while this is a hotel wheeling renovation project, we obviously have made renovations to the bridge tavern part. So this is how we inherited the Bridge Tavern, uh, and this is how we operate the Bridge Tavern today. Uh, so we open up a little bit, uh, and that's our bridge as you see her today from the previous. So uh, we still have more renovations on the bottom floor to do in terms of the Bridge Tavern, the exterior, the facade, things like that, but that will not happen sometime in 22, I'm trying to catch your breath. Um, but obviously it's a remarkable change from when we bought the place in 2016. So we hope you enjoy your tour and thanks for coming. That's all right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, Wendy and I will take half the group and we will take the stairs and you'll get to see the after picture, the same that, as you saw in the pictures. And you'll have to look at Joanne's pictures to see the before if you want to review um, what it looked like when we were here in 2018. How many were here the first time? How many, how many climbed the steps? Okay, yeah, you'll be able to see it. All right, cheaters, you've got to take the steps now. <laughs> hey, but if you haven't noticed already, so we unearthed the place 
And these are some of the artifacts that we found buried in the walls, in the ceilings, in the floors. There are letters from 1911 from residents of the hotel. We found tobacco. We found a whiskey bottle, which actually is from a distillery that used to be located in Wheeling next to the Stone Center. We did some reach, uh, research. An old Clorox bottle and, and some other quirky kind of stuff. So and that Clorox that bottle, if you read that Clorox bottle, we've actually applied to Clorox Corporation for that $2 pool. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard back yet. You get a free pool for two bucks. So. That's right. <laughs> But no Jimmy Hoffa. No, no Hoffa. No Hoffa, no pound, no cash. No pound of gold. No, we really thought no. we'd find gold. No, and, and no uh, machines. No, no, no machines. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thanks. much. And Thank you. I, I will say that every year Friends of Wheeling awards three uh, individuals or groups who we feel have done the most for historic preservation in Wheeling. And this year, Doug and Mike were recipients of that award. So congratulations again. This takes vision, but this shows what can be done. And we get very tired of hearing, oh, that's just an old building. Let's tear it down and build something new. And you can see across the street something that was done that way. And I'm speaking of the, the Knights Inn, which was probably built in the 60s, I would think. Uh, and, and now it's considered no good. And this building is a gem. So just keep in mind that we want to preserve what we can. They weren't built like this. Um, they're not built like this now. And well, that may be good in some ways. <laughs> and it takes vision and, and talent on the part of the architect as well to make it all happen. So, Wendy. This building will stand up 150 years. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. And, yeah, and so just so everybody knows, uh, really uh, appreciate Wendy for what she's done. Uh, we, have, we have butted heads many times because she spends a lot of money on things that we weren't aware of but need to be done. And honest to God, I sleep like a baby at night knowing that she did the right thing. We hired all the, all the contractors that work here. We're all local contractors. They're all friends of ours. Wendy is a personal friend of ours. Um, so these people, when they were here doing the work, including Wendy, doing the engineering and design, literally worked on this thing like it was their own home which really makes me feel good. So we've got a quality project here. Um, if, if something was being done that didn't seem correct to the contractors who were here, they would call me. Say, hey, Mike, you don't want to do this. This is what you want to do. We would contact Wendy. She would contact the engineer. And then we would make the change however we would. Because these buildings are so, they're so difficult to work on because there's so many unforeseens. Um, we had no lump sum contracts here because I don't know how anybody could put a price on this thing. Because it just every time you opened up the wall, there was a new challenge that we faced. Um, and thank you, Wendy. Well you done. Guess. You know, when you go upstairs, it's really well. Well done. Okay, let's take a walk. Take a walk. Oh, question. Yes. There's someone who spent this most particular of this. project. Oh, wait. By the time we're done, I'm guessing, what do you think? Four and a half million? Four, four, four seven? seven? Four, four seven now. Yeah. yeah. Are you, you're not from Wheeling? I am. I've lived here all my life. You, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, the question that's why I did it, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> the, que no, the, questions, the, the questions were what was the price, what was the investment in the project, and, and were they originally from Wheeling, which was yes. And another question over here. Just a comment as somebody who spent most of his adult life hanging out at the Bridge Tavern, <laughs> thank you for keeping the character. Yeah. Well, that's our, and just so you guys know, um, we, we're on the tour of the restaurant, um, but the, uh, that, that's going to be phase two of the renovation project. And, we're, and uh, I'm calling it phase two. It needs to be renovated because it's, um, it's out of code compliance, right. right? The city has been great to let us continue to operate. It's completely out of code compliance, although we put in, you know, for the health department, we've got new sinks, we've got new walk-in coolers. You know, we certainly want to do the right thing, but... I need new electric, I need new plumbing, I need new air conditioning. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff that needs to be done in there. So once the building, our hope is once the building 
provides some revenue because it's our only source of revenue, the Bridge Tavern. Um, so once the building itself provides some revenue, we can shut that down. Again, we're going to sit down with Wendy and our contractors and make an extensive, detailed plan for a six to eight week outage. It can't be longer than that. We just can't be down for months. You just can't, we can't do what we did here at the bridge. Because, I mean, one, our friends rely on the place. I rely on the place. We need revenue, but we'll have to make some sort of a plan to tear that thing apart and put it back together. Um, and it will take extensive photographs. We're thinking 50, 60 photographs, so we put it back exactly the way it is. We're going to take pictures of where the paintings are on the wall. We're going to, we're going to cover up the bar. We're going to cover the bar in plywood, put some plastic over it, but the ceilings have to come out, the walls have to come out, new electric and new plumbing have to go in, new sprinkler has to go in. We have fire protection in there. It all has to be done. But when it's finished, we want it to look like 1961 Bridge Tavern again. It's the reason we bought the place. I just, it's, it's hard to find an old haunt tavern. That, you know, they're all sterile now. They're all stainless steel and they're all sterile. Um, I like the fact that I can't tell whether it's 11 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night when I'm sitting back there. It's my favorite thing. Um, so th that'll be phase two. And we're hoping maybe um, spring of 2022, once Wendy gets her uh, uh, encyclopedia volumes done for the uh, <laughs> submission she has to make to the Department of the Interior and phase one is done, we'll, we'll tackle that one. But yeah, it, it, it'll, look, it'll look just like it did when you came in 30 years ago. And thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, right. Doc. There's, there's also this room. Now, is this room something that people can rent? Yes. And do. This often. used to be the coin and hobby shop. Right. Uh, but it is a, a rental. It is the terminal room. And again, paying homage to our past. So when it was the Wheeling Terminal Traction Room, um, it is available for rental, small parties, business meetings, breakfast. What do you think, 45, so 45? Yeah, we can seat 45, 46 people at a max. 45. Yeah. Okay. Are these columns part of the columns? No, they're original to the building structure. Yeah. We did not have to replace these, <laughs> thankfully. Yeah. Okay. And again, these are different. So the west side of the building, that's that wooden timber heavy, uh, heavy timber construction, when they did the addition of the second, third, and fourth floors, this east section has the steel as its primary structure. It does switch to some wooden structure on the upper floors, but the steel actually is on the first floor and carries down into the basement. Um, and not to belabor it, because I know we all want to get upstairs, but it is important because we were talking about money. Projects like this are critical to the redevelopment of our downtowns that are our cherished places in Wheeling, all across West Virginia, and all across the United States. And that's why, as an act of Congress in the late 1970s, the recognition of economic development, that progress is through preservation, that Congress enacted the historic tax credit program. So that is the critical tool. That is why this building has been able to be invested in. It is why the other buildings that you have seen been invested in over recent years and the other buildings that are about to be invested in. The historic tax credit allows a property owner to make that physical infrastructure investment and then gets 45% back dollar for dollar on eligible expenses. So that 4.7 million of investment on the on behalf of the four partners of the Bridge Tavern building, that investment take that 45 percent, half of it will be uh, a tax credit on their West Virginia uh, tax liability, and the other half is a 20 percent that's on their federal tax liability. That's something that can be taken over a five-year period, but uh, you as a property owner with a tax credit. Um, you are able to actually sell that value of tax credit on an open market to other corporations and entities that are looking for a tax credit benefit. So you can actually sell your value. Um, and so the, the partners here have been able to um, you know, syndicate uh, that value. And in terms of the finances of a project like this, um, that's really the backbone of how uh, something like this can happen because otherwise your return on your investment uh, is, is very challenging. And so in this case, uh, the partners are able to take advantage of the historic tax credit program. And, um, and, and that's, that's how you, you know, they call it a, a stack. And so you stack 
uh, your investment opportunities, and, and that's what really kind of makes the world go around as far as a, a, a major uh, re <coughs> rehabilitation project such as this. Did I get it right? Uh, yes, Mostly. and yeah, <laughs> and, and some other particulars. But yeah. Yeah. The, and, and David has helped us tremendously yeah. with uh, you know, the sale or non-sale because you're not yeah. allowed to sell it, yeah. uh, tax credits. It, it's a very complicated thing. But to Wendy's point, with, without that vehicle, this building would have been raised. There's no way we could have done this thing without that vehicle. I mean, there's, there's no way this building is going to be worth downtown Wheeling five million dollars. Who's going to invest five million dollars in an old building in downtown Wheeling? We just raised it. Um, but because the tax credit um, you know, <laughs> afforded us some payback right. um, for our, we, I liquidated my sock drawer um, <laughs> you know, to get some of this done, We're that's, actually that's, that's the vehicle. We yeah. have no socks. And this is actually my house now. So you guys are actually in my game room. So now we all live here. <laughs> here. We all live here. You're, now, big, you're, you're in my downtown game room. I appreciate it. Now, now the, the thing to be careful of is that uh, you have to satisfy the requirements of the State Historic um, Preservation Office, Correct. which is part of the National Trust. And so um, that you can't just, I mean, make sure you do everything right on the front end. And I think we're about out of battery on the... We're getting very low. Almost. Uh, we're we getting very low. Before. Okay, yeah. yes. So because uh, we're up here doing the yin and the yang and the cheech and the chong, we're only two of the four. Behind us there, please swing over there. My husband Sumner and my wife Alicia are the other two that make up the foursome. They're really deep in this thing. They are operational and investing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a love story. It is. It's a it love is. story. Yep. All right, and, and for those of you who are on the Facebook uh, feed of this, we are running out of battery on the phone, and so Joanne Sullivan will be taking photos as we walk through, and you'll be able to see some more after photos in addition to the ones that you saw on the, uh, the slideshow. And thank you very much for preparing that. That's, that's terrific. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right, thanks. All right, thank you. I, will, I do have one more thing to say. And that is this. This is, some people call them monkey balls or Osage Orange. Friends of Wheeling House at 921 Main, kind of across the street from here, has a tree in the backyard. And on the ground, there are probably a thousand of these. So if anyone would like to have them, come and take them uh, for crafts. Or someone said you could make jelly out of them. I don't know. But I don't know. They're heavy. Please come and take all that you want. Thank you. Enjoy the tour. Gene? Your tour starts. I want to hear yeah. what you have to say. We're doing the steps. Can you do the steps? Yeah, sure. Okay. We have a little bit of time left. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're going to just take the steps. I know, but I'm talking about the people in the elevator. Oh, yeah. Are we just going to all be on two? The ones that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. Can you hit the. Uh... Oh, yep. Sorry. Hold on. Let me just do that. Hold on. Yes. Okay, we do have a little bit of time left on the, um, on the battery, and so we will do as much as we can for the live okay. feed. When it gets slow enough, we'll stop the and shut it down. Okay, great. Can, Thank you. I can take a few up on the elevator, and I'll come back down to the next group. This is all the original uh, woodwork, the original flooring, the original trim. Everything's just gotten a nice... Uh, Clean up. <laughs> Clean up, yeah. Uh, major plaster restoration. Uh, the windows have had a facelift. Now this floor will be offices? Leased office space, which is available for rent today, right now. Is this second floor? Second floor, sir.
You can just wander uh, through, just at your leisure. You can pick either side. Oh, and point out the. This is the funny little detail about aligning the structural walls and the columns, and they overlap with the window. It drives me crazy, but <laughs> got to get over it sometimes. <laughs> Okay, so these will be generic offices as, as people As they're decide. rented, yeah, whether <laughs> one, uh, one whole side could get rented, the whole floor could get rented. Um, it could be built out in a different uh, configuration. Uh-huh, okay. And again, we're on the second floor. Mm -hmm. And then the living quarters, the Airbnb and the owner's residences are on the third, third and fourth. Third and fourth, yeah. So yeah, let's go up there. That'll be more exciting to see. Uh, although, this is my favorite corner of the building. Sorry. Thank you. As we go up through the building, the view at the southwest corner of the bridge gets better. Uh, so and, and the Capitol is yep, there. Yep, down, down Main Street. It is. It, when it was a frustrating time in the construction process, I would t tell the owners just to come up to one of these spots in the building and just take a minute. Because it was going to be worth it in the end, even though it was painful in the middle. It will be, yes, and it's available for lease right now. How you doing, Chris? It's just a big circle. So this is the other side for the leased office space. This is a conference room set up with uh, technology and whatnot and different lighting. And then this is just open office space, which again, we can fit it out to privatize the areas or leave it. There have been some folks that have looked, um, but it's available for lease. Uh, the whole floor is available. Would these be new? Would this be like new businesses or these existing businesses and wheeling that want to transition? All the above. Anybody that's looking for space for whatever reason. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Ah! I love the lights in that first room down there that are just. Yeah. Those are so cool. I've never seen them before. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, Wendy, what's behind you, these doors? So, right here. Oh. Walk this way. <laughs> so the way we did the layout, we actually arranged it so that this center hallway could be leased space and privatized with some glass, which we have not in installed yet until there's a tenant and we kind of customize the arrangement. But this is what would be the considered the common hallway. So if there's two different tenants on the east and west, then this would be the common shared hallway. These are two. Uh, restrooms, and then there's a shared kitchen uh, on the other side of this wall. Hi. Um, but the biggest thing for the historic tax credit program is uh, the phrase called character defining elements. And so the main hallway the main corridor, this rhythm of the original doors and transoms, this is what we were required to maintain. This was the most critical part of the project on every floor, the uh, character defining elements so that you could be here today and still think that this was still a hotel, right? Uh, so that was one of the things that uh, we needed to maintain and, and preserve. We could close or fix an opening, which this is fixed in place. Uh, but we needed to maintain that it was 
an opening. Yeah. We can go up the stairs if you've seen enough here. You're welcome. Which side on three are you starting on? You tell me. It's up to you. If you want to start in mine, you sure. can. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. We're going up, okay. Hello. Come on in. Hello. Turn some lights on. Hi. This is uh the kitchen, which used to be uh, divided into about three different hotel rooms. And then the room over here, which is the uh, living room, used to be, uh, I think this was one room. It was an oversized room. Most of the hotel rooms were not that big. And again, you can see the rebuilt custom windows in every opening. What percentage of the walls that are painted cream downstairs on the floor we just came oh. from are uh, plaster as opposed to? Uh, I would say probably at least 50%, maybe a little bit higher than that. Is that the same up here too? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's probably about 50-50, yeah, because we, we definitely did some demo, but we retained a lot, especially the perimeter. And then we um, subdivided and did a little bit of change for the layout. So there are some new walls, but they look like they were old. So. Sure. And when they're working on the street, they start at 7 So you can feel it. But other than that, but it's yeah. very, very quiet. We absolutely love living That's down be This doorway here is an original opening, and this doorway here is an original opening. That door is an original opening. That's an original opening. I think so, yeah. At least repairing. Is this part of the hotel? Section? Yes, yes, yes. Very nice. What would this big opening uh, you know, it was just a really weird layout. Uh, it, this was a hallway, and then this was here, and there was a smaller hallway, and then it was subdivided, and the hotel rooms were perpendicular. So it was almost like there was a double corridor. Remember that? It was kind of weird. Yep. And then it was all one. The, the kids' rooms were all just one. I yeah. There was one wall that split them in two. Yeah. But for the most part, it was all just one long room. This floor in particular had a fairly irregular layout, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to the others, which were very sort of regimented and kind of common. Um, this, this whole quadrant was a little uh, odd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I, it was a little hard to tell how t it's possible that some of the layout had changed over the years um, because there definitely were some wall partitions that were actually not original, and you could tell that they weren't original. Um, so it was a I don't want to call it a maze, but definitely was quirky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you can walk through at your leisure, and we'll keep moving to the other side. Yes. This apartment is available for lease. Yes, this is a two bedroom, two bath, long term rental available right now. Thank you. 
It is. It is. Um, if you want to point the camera down to the floor, you can see one of the floor areas that we were talking about. So where this plywood is, this is where uh, one of the original walls would have been. So the hotel room was only about 10 feet wide. And when you look down the hall here, you'll be able to see the other slices of plywood. And so this is the door to the hallway that would have been the door to this hotel room. And then this door here would have been for the next hotel room. And then as we soldier down, each door that you see on the hallway would have been the entryway into each hotel room. So each hotel room was about 10 feet wide. Not, not quite even as big as a dorm room. And probably you should, would think of it more of like a boarding house. Because the bathroom was a shared bathroom down the hall. Um, you know, you did not have your own private, private bathroom. And that, you know, was a different way of, come on in. That's right. That's right. That's, a lot of time that's right. Small. So there's a, a master bath here, master bedroom. Then there's the shared bath uh, on the off the hallway and a, and a guest room. So this is one of the Airbnbs. This is actually a long term rental. This is a two bedroom unit available uh, for long term lease. Now where were they park? Where were people park? The, uh, the owners have made arrangements and have built it into the lease uh, to have. Uh, to have available uh, spaces assigned. So when you come with the camera, uh, scan the floor and you'll be able to see the different sections with the plywood. Yes, ma'am. Do you recall how many hotel rooms there were? You know, Mike, Mike or Doug know that number, but I think it was about 20 per floor. I'm going on memory and I, I think I'm wrong about that, but it's kind of like that. Right, so we left it as so that and you'll see this door is a little different. It's offset and it actually swung out to the hallway as opposed to this, which was a hotel room door which swung in. This swung out into the hallway because where you are and between here and there, this floor section was raised and this was the common shared bathroom. And so the little tiny window that you see in the bedroom there, that was actually the window into the tiny little shared bathroom. So there's, there's two or three doors that... Uh, so this is permanently shut? Yes. Yes. Are these original oak floors? Sir. It's oak. Uh, I think it's oak. I can't remember. Is it that eighth inch? Yeah. 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 And when we needed to build a new door, we were able to actually have custom doors built to match the original. So this is a solid wood door that's actually a new door. Thank you. Fob on you. Oh, good. Oh, it's open. So this is the one bedroom Airbnb, and that's the bathroom. This is a really nice closet. I've already been there, Alicia. <laughs> but you can see again that idea of the door that swung out versus a door that would have swung in. So this would have swung into an original hotel room, and then there would have been a dividing wall right about here, really. It's covered up with the carpet in this case for the bedroom. But this would have been where we are right here, one of the shared bathrooms. Oh 
So I don't know if you want to come in and we'll loop through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's not a lot available in Wheeling, um, so this is really kind of a, a nice sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. And for long-term rental, market for that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. Is it just rent it out by the night or by the week? Or uh, by the night. By the night. But you can rent it for a week. You could rent it for a month. Roughly, do you know anything? Sorry? Roughly, do you know the price? Or? I'm not sure if it's 200 250 bucks a night. It's like a hotel room. Right. Well, that's why I want Yeah, to yeah. Tell yes, yes. So it's, I believe it's listed on Airbnb or it's about to be, and they're also going to use va vacation rental by owner, VRBO, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. So we're going to head up to the fourth floor. I, where, did you see Sumner? Where did he go? Did I lose him? I need a fob. Hold on. I'll take your fob, please. I don't have my fob. I, I gave it back to you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Did you? Yes. Did you? Yes. <laughs> fourth floor. What year did you say the fourth floor was put on? Uh, we think around 1915. It's a little hard to tell with all the uh, records and whatnot, and there weren't there aren't any real specific photographs. We have a before and an after, but there's too big of a gap in the years to know when. Like. What about that time? Yeah. Go ahead and head upstairs. This is the fourth floor. Trick or treat! <laughs> Are you ready for us, Brother Doug? Okay. Yep, thank you, Larry. This will be the 2 2 that is the president okay. on this side. Yeah. This is your place? So the third floor and the fourth floor on the east side are the same footprint in terms of the layout. So this is another two bedroom unit. And then there's another one bedroom Airbnb unit. Yes, very much so. No, it's it's pretty quiet. Um, whenever I seventy have the uh, when they have the house closed at three a.m. Any time that uh, Andrews would come from Ohio, they had to come through here, and that would make a little bit of noise. But he sleeps through it after the first two nights. So, how's your battery? Twenty percent left. Oh, okay. So again, same thing with the floor, the different sections, the replacements. And the master suite. And uh, I don't know if you want it, the master bathroom. So all the four floor windows are yes. like that? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that they made that choice. And that's something too, this was not a fancy building. You know, back to the original cost of renting a room, even at market, you know, or inflation uh, scaled into the future, even at a $22 a night, this was a plain building. I mean, there's some nice little kind of details, but as you can see, the original building here, it didn't have marble, it didn't have, other types of stone there there weren't 
rich tiles uh, or glazed tiles. You know, th this was a plain, you know, the detailing here, this is very plain. This is not ornate. Um, you know, this is, this is pretty simple in terms of, you know, early 1900s type of architecture. Um, as opposed to if you were in another building of the same era that was more ornate, like the Capitol Theater, like Wheeling Pittsburgh Steel's building, um, you know, any of the other buildings that have a more of a prestige to them, they, when they were originally built, they, were, you know, had different materials and different details. So this, the idea of it still being a very modest priced, you know, hotel matches with the idea of a modest type of building. And back in the day, it was common to have a shared bath. Yes. That's, yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. We'll head back in the other direction and go see the Airbnb. So this is the other Airbnb on the fourth floor, and uh, it actually does have a room with a view. How are we la doing, ladies? And then this is the other one bedroom, uh, one bath section. Oh yeah, this is all new guts, all new uh, jams, okay. everything's new. Because on our windows, we took out these metal pieces and Steve's saying, oh, we don't need those back. But I'm thinking we do to help the windows slide better. It, it, in, in our case, it helps control the movement. Yeah. yeah. So we, I have to source those out somewhere. That is, yeah. Call Sarl. Yeah. He did. He found a, several different places that okay. we had to buy. He had to buy new material, but it was matching yeah. the previous. Yeah, you got to get the grooves just right. Yeah. The yeah. There's also two. I won't open it, but in in the interlocking between the this bottom sash and the upper sash right here, yeah. um, what happens is there's actually a piece of metal uh -huh. on the back of this. And on the front of the yeah, bottom, yeah. So it, it, and it yeah, does this, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And so then when you lock it, uh -huh. it get, that gets you that much more of a seal. Yeah. But there's a kind of this interlocking metal. It's it's yeah. fairly brilliant, yeah. it is. and okay. it's old technology, which it's you know. Yeah. Some. Are you ready for us? For what? Come up. To come you, over. You can. All right, you're the man <laughs> of the hour. We're going to Salmon Dogs! Woohoo! Here we go! Yes, indeed. Uh, we'll just hold the doors. <laughs> All right. Welcome to our home. Now that it's getting darker. Yeah. So there's a guest room here. Uh, the master suite is over on this side. So and what happened with the elevation here? Was it always what This was, was because of the original yeah. building. Every, this original west path, and then from the stairway over, the stairway matches the new addition, and the difference is because these floors were already here. Yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry? They didn't want to have the same level? Yeah. yeah. yeah for some reason? Yeah. <laughs> so there's, a, there's the guest bath that's here. This is what we saw in the photograph uh, on the, during the talk, right, where the wood is lighter here and then it gets darker. No, this is, this is actually not a hardwood floor. This is a synthetic floor. Oh, really? It was a cost-saving uh, thing that we needed to do in this case. The original wood floors that were toothed together were over in the apartments that you have just been in. So that means we did a good job. You couldn't yeah. tell where we had the old and the new, right? True. I won't ask for my money back. <laughs> Yes. So, take a little peek out at the bridge. Is there anything else to see? This is it. Yeah. Yeah. Take a little peek out that corner window, and you can see the bridge right there on the end. Yep. The building needs torn down. Yes. So we have a green space to enjoy the bridge. Anything will be better. Yeah. <laughs> Even brown. Anything. Yeah. Space period. Go around to the living room. So that we can preserve the architecture of the original. And when it was done, I'm like, we are definitely running out of battery now, so we hope you've enjoyed this and you can see what can be done with an old building in Wheeling. And we hope to see many more like this in the future. So signing off, have a good afternoon.